Recap in minutes. Today we will be going through a war, action, and thriller movie from 2022, entitled, Once in the Desert. There will be spoilers ahead in this video, so chill out and enjoy. The movie begins in the desert of the Syrian city of Palmyra. A Russian explosive expert, Captain Dima Shabarov comes to a distant location to transfer the captives. After some moments the scenes shift to the base, where he trains the Syrian Special War Explosive Ordnance Disposal Team. He signifies the importance of handling the magazines of the guns. He tells him how to defuse the syringe mine and a gyroscopic bomb. He forbids them from touching the explosive device with the gyroscope. And shows them how to yank on it with the grappling hook. He snatches one of his trainees' cell phones and asks them to pass their test first. He says geolocation devices are forbidden at the base and nails the phone on the board. He orders them to leave for the combat mission today. The next moment, the captain and his disposal team board a military vehicle and move toward Palmyra City. They were stopped near a check post and were ordered to check the minefields first. They were all very happy that their army had liberated the city from the ISIS militia. He lines up his deminers, and briefs them that three Iranian deminers were killed in that area before them. He encourages them that if they want to pass the exam and get the deminers certificate, they must clear the field first. Now they get in the field and Muslim finds a landmine some steps ahead. The captain orders everyone to get back while monitoring him to defuse the bomb. Muslim cuts the wire and defuses the bomb. They congratulate each other and ask for the certificate. The captain tells them that they will get the certificates at the base. Now a Syrian woman, Jamila, comes to them and offers them water. She had seen them working and was impressed by their bravery. She tells the captain her name and asks him to have a word with him. She informs him that she was a guide before the war. She asks him why he was on the phone. He tells him that his daughter Tatiana is going to be married and he wants to call her. She says he is easy to talk to. Now his assistant, Riyad comes and asks the captain to come with them for the photo. He excuses Jamila and walks toward them, but notices that they have left their equipment on the road. He suspects the area and yells at them to come back to him and take the equipment. Suddenly, when he was observing them, a landmine explodes and everyone gets blown by it. They all die and most of them get injured including Jamila. Moments later when he comes back to his senses, he checks his team but everyone's dead. After finding the bag of Jamila, he looks for her, who is behind the van. Meanwhile, a chopper comes and the rescuers take him to it, but he refuses and asks them to get Jamila first. They go back and take her to the chopper too. They put them on the stretcher and flew out from that area. After some days, some higher Russian military official comes to the base where he is now recovered. They interrogate him about what happened on the day of the blast. They also notice that he is uncomfortable with the investigation, so the officer says they are sending him back home tomorrow. He goes to the head nurse and asks him what happened to the girl who came with him. She informs him that the Syrians were sent to Tartus base. He goes to the runway to board to go back to Russia and sees his previous team coming out of a plane. Lieutenant Dillon, Makarsky, and Kostya along with others line up before departing. Captain Dima notices them and comes to Captain Dillon. He introduces Dima to his new explosives disposal team and a general passes by. The general mayor calls Captain Dima and he runs to him. He asks him what he is doing with Kostya's team. He tells him that he is sharing his experience with his team. He says he is heading back home but the general orders him to stay. He says he is the in charge of logistics, and something big is planned in Palmyra. He offers Dima to be part of his special unit which he accepts. Moments later, he is on the Orange Orchard Road with his new team. They get the intel that there is a battle going on to the left of them in the desert. Dima asks them to have a short stop at a certain point, he tells Kostya that his previous team is buried there. He gets out, meets some Syrian soldiers, and asks about Jamila. Suddenly Riyadh appears from behind the tents and both of them are surprised to see each other alive. They talk about their team and Jamila, he asks him to find her, exchange numbers, and leaves. They go to the battlefield with their tanks and homes in the desert. They fight ISIS militants alongside the Ali Babas team. Meanwhile, Captain Dima gets a phone call from Jamila during the fight. He says they are fighting the battle and will come to Palmyra afterward. He gets busy in the fight, saves one of the Syrian tankers from burning, and takes back to the lines. After some time they reach the Orange Orchard and start checking the land mines. Captain Dima finds tripwires and orders the unit to hold the positions. He informs them that there is an eye on the trees. They go back to send the robots to work on the IEDs. Dima tells Dylan that the orchard needs a lot of work, and that they should take the unit to the rendezvous point. Now they send the disposal robot vehicle to the orchard, which starts exploding the hidden IEDs. They reach Palmyra after that and both the captains, Dima and Dylan, go to an internet cafe where they talk to their daughters. Tatiana hangs up saying that she is busy, 
while the locals join Nilan when he dances for his little daughter. The next moment, they move from there to an abandoned gas factory where they find more explosives planted behind the drums. Captain Dima says the mobile bomb is fully charged, which means the militants are somewhere nearby. He says they will inspect the place after defusing the bomb. Now they give Dima a fuse and detonator and five minutes to do his work. Suddenly he suspects something and turns back. He finds a wire under the sand and follows it where two militants are holding its button. He engages in a fight with them while his team gets alert for the battle. He kills them, disconnects the explosives, and waves to his team that everything is clear. While inspecting the bags and vests of the ISIS terrorists, Captain Dima finds a capacitor and says the system is still alive. This is some kind of a new technique for him. They all get back and take cover. Meanwhile, they see a suicide truck, fully armored to blow up that factory explosives. The unit took positions to destroy the truck but the terrorist kept moving toward it. Captain Dima gets into a pit to fire at him but he escapes their attacks. Villain's rocket launcher disables the truck, but it explodes with the explosives mined in the factory too. When they come back to the check post, Captain Nillen informs the general mayor that Captain Dima does not follow his orders. He says he is a very important demoner in his unit and they need him. He scolds him saying that any mine is recoverable but not every risk is justified. He holds him back the report and says the risk is justified. Captain Nillen says Dima brought an eye to a personnel location. Lieutenant Makarski confirms it and then, General dismisses Dima from his duties and suspends his missions. When he is dropped to go back to the base, he requests Thilin to take him with him. They are going to a village called Tavalva where Isis has planted the bombs in the well. He refuses to take him there but repents when he sees a lot of mines in the well. Dima hears a loud explosion at the check post and prepares the Syrian unit to come with him to the village. He takes their pickup and goes to the village where he starts killing the Isis terrorists. After some time, when they clear the area, he finds the dead body of the deminers. One of the local interpreters tells him that both of them are dead including Nilan. It is not confirmed whether he dies in the action or not, but the interpreter says he has died. The next day, he goes to the general who says they have taken Nilan's dead body for ransom. He requests him to involve him in this mission to identify him and take him back. But he refuses and says the ransom for Nilan's body is already set. They get on a chopper and fly to their location to get his body. When they reach their location, an allied group of ISIS militants attack them. They hit their chopper with a rocket launcher, follow it, and reach their crash site. Back at the base, they assess that they were ambushed and it was planned. They say they still keep deceiving them. The Major General orders to destroy their mining factory. They fly their jets and blow up the coordinated target. At night, the General comes and orders Colonel Dima to get ready to work in Palmyra. They are on the road to the city in the morning. He diverts to meet Riyadh, one of his previous disposal team members, and awards him his demining certificate. They mourn their deceased fellows and he starts moving to the liberated city of Palmyra. He gets upset seeing the ruins of the city and thinks about Jamila. Now he goes to a vendor shop and asks the salesman to help him find an address. He escorts him to the address where he meets Jamila. They talk about the attack, and Jamila asks him to call his daughter to congratulate her on her wedding. They talk to his daughter and after that, he departs. He goes to the outskirts of the city with a fraction of the Syrian army. They will take him to the site where Isis will give him Dylan's body. When they reach a market, some militants of Jay Shal Sham come with a dead body in their van. The Syrian soldier wants them to show the body but they ask for the money first. He excuses them to make a phone call and they attack them. Heavy gunfire ensues and they neutralize all the militants. Captain Dima checks the body but that is not Dylan. Now one of the Syrian soldiers hands him a terrorist's phone. He checks his photos and videos, and is shocked to see that Jamila is a spy of ISIS. He gets upset watching that video and thinks about her and the attack where he met her. He recalls that everything was fine on that day when the jammer was on, but when it was off, Jamila called someone and they blew up the entire field. After that he goes straight to her home, he is shocked to see her playing with one of the terrorists. He kills a man and shouts at her to raise her hands. He finds him collaborating with the terrorist outfit Jay Shalsham. She says it's their destiny that they met in the war. She says Jaish offered a deal that they will transfer Dylan in exchange for Jihadi John. She says he is still alive and they will come to the dried up river, for the transfer at 12 at noon. They said she herself should take the Jihadi John to them. Dima gets up to go out but turns and shoots Jamila. The next day they are out to go to the dried up river to transfer the captives. The movie comes back to the point where it started. They have taken Jihadi John to the site. They have put the snipers on hold and the drones are monitoring the situation. Captain Dima takes John to him to take Dylan back. He hands him over to him and they run back to their cars. But Dima is shocked to see Dylan is all wrapped up with the explosives. 
He asks him to stand still and starts defusing the bombs. He takes off his jacket and searches for the wires to disconnect the bomb. Shockingly, he finds a gyroscopic trigger in a very short time to defuse it. He pulls his vest and asks him to slide out carefully. He asks him to run and take cover and within seconds the vest blasts. Captain Dima dies in the blast. The movie ends when Dima hugs his daughter in a bridal dress. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe recap in minutes for more videos like this and help the channel grow.